everybody, this is Audrey Sinet with Cooking Couture Atlanta. Now, honey, you know I'm doing a wine review, but today I'm official, honey. I have an official politician with a lapel pin on and everything up in the house, girls. <laughs> I am so excited, privileged, and honored, seriously, to be sharing a space and doing a little review. We're going to have a little elevated conversation with... <clears throat> The communications director of Stonecrest, the city of Stonecrest. Correct. Is that correct? Now, I'm going to let him run down this long list of things that he's done in the past. But this is somebody that I've always admired. I've always watched. I've been in Atlanta 27 years. And he's been a mover and shaker. All the movers and shakers are always the movers and shakers. And I am so privileged and pleased to be able to sit down and talk about everything Stonecrest and Atlanta with... Mr. Adrian Bell, thank you for coming with me. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank, thank you, you for coming. Honey, he got look at this. So <laughs> awesome. Oh, child. I, listen, so we are sharing a bottle of Sea Glass Riesling from Monterey County in Santa Barbara. So, Crystal, I got me another California. Um, so, we're going to toast to a topic today. Tell me what topic we're going to toast to today. Hmm. Uh, let's go with something like uh, prosperity in the new year. Okay, it's the new year. So, let's put a little twist on that. Let's okay. toast to making your own prosperity. That works. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about that. I want to know about the opportunity, business, op if there are any business opportunities in Stonecrest, mm -hmm. like for people to open up small businesses. Definitely. You are... You know what's happening in Atlanta. You know right. about all the projections and all the different <laughs> things that's coming. We gonna get the business tea today. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> but you do kind of you you have a feel for what's going on mm -hmm. in the community mm -hmm. um, outside of Stonecrest in Atlanta, all around the metropolitan area, and we want to talk about that. That's that's good. Right. Let's toast to prosperity this twenty twenty. Happy New Year to yeah. so prosperity. Let's make our own prosperity this year. Definitely. Let's see what we're working with. Good. Yeah, I like that. It's not too sweet. And that was, yeah. And because I, I don't really do sweet. <clears throat> and when I seen it, it was a reason that worried me. So my rating system is from one to seven, and you can attribute that to one to seven days of the week. How okay. many bottles of this do you think you need in your collection, at your house, or that you would have to have? None of this cool. You know what I mean? I haven't. I, it, it's only one wine that has gotten past two bottles. To have a whole bottle right. in the house is a lot. Right. Now, if you went out, if you'd have a glass, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Or if you've seen it somewhere, you wouldn't mind trying it because you already have experienced it. Mm -hmm. So from one to seven, how many bottles of this do you would you have to have? I would probably do one. And the only reason uh, is because I'm not as much of a sweet wine. And you drinker. think this is a little sweet? It's a, a little, little bit. On the sweet side. Um, okay. And then... I, believe it or not, I make my own wines. What? <laughs> yeah. Not all of them. But uh, years ago, someone bought me a wine making kit. For, oh, really? Yeah, for a Christmas gift. It's probably been almost Oh, that is years too ago. cute. I've never seen that. Yeah. It used to be a company called Artful Winemakers. Uh, they had gone out of business. Oh, okay. So uh, they used to do it in maybe like a three gallon container. And I forgot how many bottles that makes. But now I have a cousin that's a chef. And we have gone into doing we've got like a couple of five gallon barrels oh, stop it. of red wine now yeah, you know you better send me over some wine I and cassie will. i know you didn't know about that because if you did i know you would have got me a wine maker a wine maker that yeah. is awesome it's actually simple how simple is it all you do is there is something that looks like a five gallon paint bucket that okay. you can start with of course it's it's kitchen grade and it's clean okay but you start with that and you mix in your grape juice, which you can get from, it's not like Welch's, you can make it that way, but it'll be kind of rocky. Yeah. But you get the grape juice from like a winery type grape, because oh, okay. wine grapes are small. Okay. And so uh, you mix it with grape juice concentrate, and then they have certain chemicals that you mix in with it, the yeast, uh, if you want a more oaky flavored wine, then there's a little, mm, little bag. That's little chardonnay -ish. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so um, you, it's basically by instruction, you can almost YouTube it. And, yep, and I think if I remember correctly, five gallons will do uh, a little more than a case. Really? Uh, mm -hmm, about 24 bucks. 
Child, you done gave me enough information to be dangerous. <laughs> Now, y'all yeah, know I'm about to do some wine. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's, that's, I'm, I'm about to do some wine. Yeah. The five that gallon barrel cool. is not even as long as this table. And Child, I'm about to make me out. some wine. Yep. Really? Yep. So, do you always do red wines? I've done one white and I messed it up. Um, because we didn't, we didn't, you have to stabilize it after you ferment the wine. Okay. Then the stabilizing stops the fermentation, which also stops the formulation of gas. Okay. And so what I didn't do is it tasted good when we first poured it. We poured it one Christmas, probably about three, four years ago, mm -hmm. and um, put it in the refrigerator on its side. And about two weeks later, the corks had popped out because the gases were still formulated in there. Oh, so we kind of messed that one up. But my red ones have come out really good. Really? Yeah. Now, see, there's something mm -hmm. in red wine that agitates my migraines. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm not a big red wine drinker. And I mm -hmm. forgot what it is. It's one of the acids. But what I'm thinking is, you got me thinking, if I can make my own, whatever it is that caused the migraine, I won't put that in. Right. Unless it's really necessary. But mm -hmm. if I'm making it myself, yep. get it's, out of here. It's a fun project. You have to, it, it costs, pay, it may take patience. Okay. Because you got to let it ferment for about three weeks. Oh, um, okay. Then okay. you got to let it stabilize. And then the okay. longer you age it, the, the better it becomes. Like we have uh, some wine now uh, in a oak barrel. Uh, oh, that the oak really? barrel at one time was used for uh, bourbons. So yes. it's going to give it a little bourbon twang to it. Yes. And uh, my cousin, like I said, my cousin, a guy named Otis Weary. Uh, oh my God, I already thought you yeah. did everything. But now, <laughs> this was just you, in, in just addition to everything hobby. else, publishing, communications, politics, you made wine. Oh my God. Yep. Yep. That is awesome. Yep. We would love when you start talking about prosperity and businesses. One of the things that we really want to do in the next three, five years, even sooner if possible, is to open up a little wine bar out in Stonecrest. Oh, yes, honey. Well, we're going to do that because we're going to have the treats up in there for them and everything. <laughs> we're going to collab on this now. Yeah. We're not going to open up no wine bar without me. So <laughs> I will stalk you. <laughs> you know I will. I will. <laughs> All right.